In this video, I'm going to show you what support and resistance are. I'm then going to show you how you can use support and resistance to greatly improve your stock and option trading. Knowing where support and resistance are enables you to buy and sell stock and options at optimal times. It gives you that edge, that advantage you need to be successful in the markets. First, what is support? Here you see the daily chart of a company that most of you are probably familiar with, its Realty Income ticker symbol O. In this video, blue lines represent support and pink or red lines represent resistance. So let's first look at support. Notice on this daily chart of Realty Income, that over the past several months, it's been finding nice support right around this blue line. That line coincides with the area between 50 and $51 per share. When we look at this chart, we see that multiple times over the past several months, Realty Income has come down and touched or approached that $50.5 area. Every time it's done that, buyers have come in and supported it and turned this level into a very nice support. Notice that happened at least five or six times over the past several months. This is a very nice and clearly defined level of support when it comes to Realty Income. Although Realty Income is currently trading for around $56 per share, if it were to come back down to this $50 or $51 area, I would feel pretty confident that it most likely serve as support. Remember, when we talk about support and resistance, these are levels where stocks tend to find support or find resistance based on its recent history. At some point, all support and resistance gets broken. So we're looking for areas that have repeatedly served as support and resistance. Here we see a nice example of that in this blue line, which is right around $50.5 per share over the past four months with Realty Income. So this is a nice flat area that served as support. What about when a stock is trending up or trending down? What does that support look like? Here you see the daily chart of Tesla, a company most of you are probably familiar with. I know this line extends way off the screen here. We're gonna to get to that a little bit later in the video when we talk about resistance. But notice this area of support. Notice it's not a nice horizontal line here. That's because the stock is overall in a downtrend. But notice that every time it approaches this area along this pink or red line here, it tends to find support. This happened once back in August, again in October, and a third time in April of this year. So from what we see here on the screen, we see Tesla has been in an overall downtrend. It's continually made lower lows on this daily chart. And it's been trading in a nice channel because notice that the highs, they've also consistently been lower. We'll get to what's happened with Tesla more recently later in the video, but as you see here, overall Tesla's zone is in a downward slope. Another technical indicator you can use to find support are moving averages. Here on this daily chart of T-Row, we see the green 50 and red 200 moving averages. Notice how over the past seven months, T-Row has responded to these moving averages. Now overall, back in this area here, T-Row was in a downtrend, but once it broke through that green 50 moving average, notice that over the past seven months, that moving average along with the red moving average has served as nice support for it. Whenever it came down to around that green 50 or red 200 moving average, those moving averages tend to act as support for the stock. Another important point to keep in mind is that the more that a moving average or an area serves as support for it, or the higher the number of times it comes down, touches, or gets close to that area, and it bounces off it, the stronger the support is. Here we see that at least seven or eight times over the past seven months, these moving averages have served as support for T-Row. As long as that continues, these moving averages continue to serve as support for it, that support becomes stronger and stronger. In other words, the higher the number of times that an area or a moving average has served as support for a stock, the stronger that support will be. Those repeated supports or repeated bounces off those levels make that resistance stronger and stronger, kind of like doing reps when it comes to exercise. You get stronger each time you do a rep. But what time frames should you use to find your support and resistance? Well, it really depends on what kind of trader you are. For example, if you're a day trader, you'll probably look more at the one or five minute charts. If you're a longer term stock or option trader, you may look at the daily chart like you see here on the bottom. Or if you're a very long-term trader, someone who likes to buy stock and hold for years, you may look at the weekly chart you see down here on the bottom right. So the time frame you're looking for your support and resistance on is based on how quickly you are in and out of the market. The faster you are in and out of your trades, the lower the time frame you want to use. The longer you tend to be in your trades, the longer the time frame you want to use. And it's also a good idea to look at multiple time frames. That's what I like to do. Here you see my typical chart setup whenever I'm doing trades. I use the weekly chart to see over the long term what is a stock doing. I then look at the daily chart, the one here on the bottom left, to decide when is the optimal time to sell a cash or put option or cover call option. I then look at the hourly chart to see if the hourly chart is in my favor and those technicals are looking solid. And then when I'm deciding to enter a trade and trying to determine the urgency or how fast I want to enter that trade, I look at the minute chart. So we talked about support. Now let's discuss resistance. Resistance is an area that when a stock has been going up, it tends to slow down and find resistance 
or find sellers selling that stock when it reaches that area. It's kind of like a ceiling. When it gets close to the ceiling, it tends to come back down. Here you see the daily chart of Realty Income ticker symbol O. Notice here in this pink line, a clearly defined area or line of resistance. This resistance dates back two years in time. So it's a very strong level of resistance. Notice the pink line I've drawn here. This is my resistance line. The reason why I drew it where it's at is that's an area that served as resistance for the stock multiple times. You see once, generally in this area twice, three times, four times, five times, six times, and now it's testing it again. It has pushed through it, but I'd like to see a few more candles before I determine that this resistance is broken. In fact, what I really wanna see is that it's pushed through and come down and find support just above that pink line. One important concept is that when resistance has been broken, it tends to turn to support and vice versa. If you have a level that's been serving as support and stock breaks through that support, then it comes back up, that level tends to turn into resistance. So support once broken through tends to turn into resistance and resistance once broken through tends to turn to support. Something else is interesting with realty income is those moving averages. Notice how it responds around this red 200 moving average specifically. It does tend to trade above it, but it doesn't get far above it. It tends to find resistance around or just above that red 200 moving average on this daily chart. That's another area that served as resistance for realty income over the past several years. Now let's look at the daily chart of Tesla because you're gonna see something interesting here. Notice I've connected the highs from these waves going back several years. This is about a three year time frame chart. Notice that for about the first year and a half, this pink line here, it served as resistance for Tesla. Notice that multiple times when we got close to that red line, sellers came in and sold the stock down hard. Notice that it corresponded to another line down here on the bottom. That level served as support for it. So this area in here was a nice zone where you could have traded in and out of Tesla or bought and sold options multiple times over that year and a half. What's interesting is notice what happened once Tesla broke through that area of resistance. Once it broke through that area of resistance, notice that line that used to serve as resistance for it, it then turned into support. Remember what I mentioned a minute ago? Resistance once broken turns into support. Well, here you see a perfect example of it. Once this level of resistance was broken, it then turned into support for Tesla. And it's been doing that ever since for about the past year. Keep in mind that same concept I mentioned earlier. The higher the number of times a level or moving average serves as resistance for a stock, the stronger that resistance will be. When it comes to resistance, your time frames are the same as what I mentioned earlier for support. If you're a shorter term trader, you trade in and out of the markets very fast. For example, if you're a day trader, you look at the one or five minute charts. If you're a 20 to 60 day option trader, you might look at the daily chart. And if you're a longer term investor, you like to buy and hold for a year or more, you might wanna look at the weekly charts. And again, in fact, I look at all charts. I will even consider the monthly chart on occasion. So how can we use this knowledge of support and resistance to our advantage when it comes to trading stocks and options? Knowing when a company is most likely going to find support enables you to buy stock at better prices. For example, look at this chart here. Would you think it was a good idea to buy realty income right now? Well, it's gone up and it might continue to go up. In fact, the level where it's at now is right around a resistance line. And if this line is broken through, then as you saw with Tesla, this indeed might become its new support. But overall, I'd really like to see it come back down and have a nice strong test of this previous resistance line. So ideally, if I was looking to buy realty income or sell a new cash or put option, I'd either like it to come back down and really have a nice test of support here, or if it came back down to this blue line here, I'd definitely feel comfortable selling some cash or put options against it or buying some stock outright. If I was looking to get in and out in a relatively short period of time. Now, if I'm a longer term trader, I might look at this area as a nice potential entry point because it has pushed through a previous level of resistance. So quite possibly, I might be ready for another advance. But if I'm a shorter term trader, I wanna buy it when it's down here or sell options when it's down here. Now let's look at Tesla. Here you see a pink line that represents an area that served as resistance for Tesla going back about eight months ago. Notice was the high from this wave back in here. Notice what's happened to Tesla as it approached this high. Although it had a very strong advance over 20 days of about 42%, when it reached this area here that it previously served as resistance for it, it slowed its advance down. It had a big red down day. Now it's coming back up to test this area for resistance again. Odds are this area might hold. Remember, keep in mind, the areas of resistance, once they're broken through, they then become the new support. So if Tesla were to break through this, you would expect this area to serve as support for it. Not a guarantee, but that's the odds. Now let's use these areas of support and resistance to make a trading decision. Let's say, for example, we wanted to buy Tesla. At what area would you like to buy Tesla based on its recent price movement 
and support resistance. Well, if it stay in this area here and it's below this red line, I would not be looking to buy it. I'd quite possibly be looking to sell it. However, if it were to decline down to this blue line, this blue area in here, I would definitely be interested in buying Tesla if everything else gave me the green light. This is an area that has repeatedly served as support for Tesla. So as long as nothing has changed, I'll expect it to again serve as support for it. However, keep in mind that if it were to break through this area of resistance and this becomes the new support, I'd then be interested in buying some Tesla if it broke through this area. And conversely with options, if I was comfortable selling a bearish call credit spread, this might be a time when if earnings weren't approaching, I would consider doing that. Or if I was more interested in selling a cash care put option, I definitely wouldn't do it now. I'd like to see Tesla either come back down here and be finding support around this blue line and then sell a cash care put option, or I'd like to see it break through this area of resistance, which should then turn to support for it and sell a cash care put option at that time. Buying stock or selling cash care put options around support, and conversely, selling stock or doing bearish call credit spreads around a major area of resistance lowers your potential risk and puts the odds in your favor that you'll win on those trades. Now keep in mind, you don't wanna look at just the stock, you wanna look at the overall market. For example, the market right now is a very strong bull market. So you have to think, do I really wanna go against the market? Even if I thought Tesla was going to decline off this area of resistance, do I really wanna go against a very strong overall bull market? You probably heard the term, a rising tide raises all boats. Well, keep that in mind when you're looking to go against the market on a position. Not saying to never do it, but just know what your risks are. Buying Tesla when it's down here is a whole lot safer place to buy than when it's up here. But if it breaks through this area of resistance, it can be a very nice area to buy as well. And here you see an example of a stock that's done what I just mentioned to you. It was finding resistance at the area and then broke through that resistance and appears to be trying to find support. The stock is Royal Bank of Canada, ticker symbol RY. And notice on this bottom left chart, this daily chart, what's happened. Notice that it found resistance at this level right here around the 109 and 51 cent area back several months ago. But about a week and a half ago, it came up and guess what happened? Well, again, it found resistance there for about a week, but then it pushed through that resistance. And now that I've zoomed in here so you can see the volume, notice how strong the volume was when it pushed that resistance. That means buyers were so excited, they bought it up in a frenzy. And as a result, it pushed through that resistance. Now it appears to be coming back down to try and find support at that previous area of resistance. Now it hasn't completed the confirmation yet, but I've placed a neutral bullish trade in ROI because it did push this recent area of resistance. These areas of support are also great areas to add to positions. Let's say you like to accumulate or to own stock for a long time. Let's say you want to buy some more Tesla. When will be the best time to do that? Now? I don't think so. I like to see either come back down here to this area that served as support for it or break through this level of resistance and let it find support just above this pink line and then buy some or add to my position. By doing that, you put the risk to reward ratio in your favor. If you buy here and Tesla comes way back down here, that's a huge decline that you have to recoup in order to get back to break even. However, if you wait and buy it down this area down in here, it's a lot more likely that the stock will go up in price and you can win on that trade a lot sooner. But what happens when things go wrong? A support level doesn't act as support. A resistance level doesn't act as resistance. Well, let's look at the same chart of Tesla and talk through that. Here you see a line that served as resistance for Tesla over multiple years. If you count, you'll see that over nine times over the past several years, this line here served as resistance for Tesla. That is a very strong resistance line. So several weeks ago, when we saw Tesla having a nice advance, a trader could rightly have assumed that that area would again serve as resistance for it, but that's not what happened. It broke through that level of resistance and that area now appears to be trying to turn as its new support. But notice why that happened. Notice down the volume section. Notice how strong the volume was as it was pushing through that area. That high volume told us with those strong, big candles told us that buyers are very excited about buying Tesla. That would have given us a clue, but we want to be careful if we're looking for this area to serve as resistance for Tesla again. With these high, big volume green candles, as well as these strong, big green candles, where the stock was closing towards the upper part of the candle each day, that is an area that I would not have entered a short position in Tesla. But let's say you did. Let's say you thought that that red resistance line was going to hold. It was going to service resistance again for Tesla for the 10th time. Well, when would you be wrong? Well, you know you'd probably be wrong on this day when it broke through there. But the next day, you know you're absolutely wrong. So these lines can serve as protection for you to tell you that you're wrong on a trade. See, these resistance and support lines, they hold until they don't. And when they don't, they're a warning sign to tell you that you were wrong on the trade. The market disagrees with you, and therefore you need to protect yourself or get out of the position. Now let's look at an area of support. Let's go back to Realty Income, ticker symbol O, a lot less volatile stock than Tesla. So let's say you wanted to buy some Realty Income, you wanted to add your shares, or you wanted to sell a cash care put option. When would you do it? Well, if it comes down and starts to find support above this pink line, that might be its new level of support. But let's say it did. Let's say it came back down here, was testing our blue line. We said, you know what? 
I think it's a good time to buy some realty income. Or I think it's a good time to sell cash can put option in realty income. Well, that's all great. And I would agree with you. It does look good. But if it were to break below this level of support, say get 50 cent to a dollar below that area of support, and keep in mind that area that used to be support, that blue line, it has now become resistance. That means that realty income will mostly continue to decline from where it's at. That's not always the case, but the odds are that once it breaks through that support area, that support area will turn into resistance at least temporarily. So it's important to recognize when you're wrong, when a level of previous support and resistance have switched, so now the opposite. Support has become resistance and resistance has become support. And when you're wrong, you wanna manage the trade properly or just get out altogether. There's nothing wrong with taking a small loss that could potentially turn into a larger loss. Losses are just a part of trading. You just wanna minimize them or keep them as small as possible. Being able to determine where support and resistance will most likely be are very important to be a successful long-term stock and option trader. They help you identify potentially good areas to buy or sell stock at or to buy or sell options at. I encourage you to use these concepts of support and resistance to improve your stock and option trades. If you'd like to get an alert whenever I buy stock or sell options, check out the benefits of becoming a patron down at the link in the description below. If you'd like to increase your knowledge on some of the technical indicators I use to buy stock and sell options, check out the video at the link above and the description below entitled Best Technical Indicators. Until next time, happy investing, and we'll see you again soon.